Welcome to How to Retail. I'm Ryan Edwards and today we're here at the Sleep Store. We're about to meet owner and operator Louise Tangay. So let's do that now. Hi, I'm Louise. I'm the founder and owner of the Sleep Store along with my husband, Matt. So tell me a little bit about the Sleep Store. So we're an e-commerce store, so no bricks and mortar. And we've been operating for 15 years started on my dining room table after I had my second child and I was looking for ways to avoid going back to a corporate retailing job which sounded like a nightmare um, and it was just e-commerce was just getting started and I'd found some really good information and ideas for helping babies sleep so it just kind of came together the way I could work from home and these ideas and products that there was like a natural target market for. So it was a happy day to not have to go back to the city. <laughs> what was the inspiration behind the sleep store? So back when I had my first son, Jack, who's now 18, um, I discovered this book called The Happiest Baby on the Block. And it sort of had all these ideas called the five S's, swaddling, shushing, swinging, various things, to help babies get to sleep. And it worked miraculously. He went from being a nightmare to sleeping really well. And I spent the next couple of years buying copies of that book for all my friends and workmates that had babies because the information was so good I wanted to share it. And then after I had Tom two years later, you still could barely buy that book and you still couldn't buy any of the things that the book recommended like good swaddles or white noise machines or white noise just at all. I wanted to share this information that I had discovered that was so effective and then I wanted there to be swaddles that people could use and I wanted to work from home. So, <laughs> so I sort of put it all together to kind of share that information, but to make it a one stop shop so people could get what they needed to have sleeping babies. What was your background to bring the sleep store to life? Well, I had worked in retail for my whole career, right through school, right through university, finished it, got my degree, psychology degree didn't want to be a psychologist, wanted to be a retailer. So, so I kind of always worked in retailing, working, you know, up to general manager kind of level. But I did want to be self-employed and to be able to work around my kids. So it was, I'd had years and years of, um, you know, selling. Not really, I did a bit of buying when I worked for Whitcalls. Um, but I, so I was confident that I knew about buying and selling. I was confident, um, you know, that I knew what, parents needed so I kind of understood the target market because I was the target market for my own products um, and so it was really we were in a fortunate position too that my husband had a good job I could just put a bit extra on the mortgage and kind of take the plunge while I was still on maternity leave from my corporate job <laughs> so it was a kind of a low risk way to jump in but we did set up as a you know proper business right from day one so like gst registered a really good professional website all those things right from day one but we we're pretty confident it was a good idea so off we went louise how important are people to the sleep store well they're everything because like it's too big for just me now like initially it was just me and then one part-time and then my husband quit his job without telling me <laughs> when he was going to come and work at the sleep store too. So, you know, for the first couple of years it was two and then it was three. And now we're up to, I think we're recruiting at the moment for number 24 and 25. So it's a really rapidly growing team. We set a very high le level of customer service and you need really incredible people to deliver that. Because we try to get, even if we have like, 1,000, 1,500 orders, we still try to get all of them out every day. So on those days, not only are all the customer service people packing and picking, everybody, the accountant, marketing manager, everybody is here picking and packing. So, you know, our team are amazing and they're all so committed, they're all so passionate, they all just live our values really, really well. Why do you think anyone would choose to come and work for the sleep store? Uh, well, it's fun, it's busy, there's never a dull moment. Um, I think, you know, we're a successful retailer. People like to work somewhere where it's all going well. You know, their jobs are really assured here. There's no worries about, you know, redundancy or business going down the gurgler. So we're doing really well and people like to feel part of the winning team. So I think there's definitely that. And we have really good 
um, profile, I guess, most of our team have kids and they know us as a business and they know we sort of have great service and we stand by our quality and all those sorts of things. So I think people want to be part of that and, you know, we pay well, we, you know, there's opportunities. Yeah, I think there's just, it's, and it's just a really fun, great vibe. It's never a dull moment, that is for sure. We are a living wage accredited employer. So I think, you know, for our entry level rate, we'll be going up to 22.85. So that's for anybody over 16, that's what they start on. So even some of the after school students are on that. So it's pretty happy days, 22.85. Um, so I think, yeah, for living wage, I think we were one of the first or the first retailer in New Zealand to be living wage accredited. So for us, that's just about doing the right thing can't understand paying any less than that because I really wouldn't want to have to pay rent and buy groceries on less than that now, especially not in Auckland. So for us, that's just about really doing the right thing and, you know, starting people off on a salary that they can actually afford to work here. So the Sleep Store is a real online success. Have you ever considered moving to a bricks and mortar store? Yes, we do get asked that quite often. Well, people, um, even from when we first started, people would email and say, where are your branches? I think the funniest was when someone said, where are your branches in Sydney? <laughs> this was about like six months after starting and I was still at my dining room table just with myself. So it was pretty funny. But no, we do get asked that often and the answer is not ever. Um, I did a lot of years in retail, a lot of years, you know, late nights in malls every weekend. Um, and I don't want to do that, and I don't want my staff to have to do that, you know, like we, we can operate a really great business with really high level of customer service from here, just online. Um, our customers are all parents of babies and young children, and they don't necessarily shop 9 to 5, they generally shop between 8 and 11 p.m. sometimes at 2 in the morning. So, you know, our customers want to shop when it's convenient for them. We do invest a lot in customer service resources like live videos and lots of um, how to choose products and we um, spend a lot of time answering emails and phone calls and give people the opportunity to ask all the questions they would ask in store and they get just as good if not better service from us in that format because our staff are very knowledgeable and, you know, they take the time to answer properly. What advice would you give to someone thinking about setting up their own online retail store? Well, don't do it in my niche would be a good idea. <laughs> I don't want to share. No, just kidding. Um, I, but I do think that's my main tip is you've got to think of your niche. You've got to, there's so many online stores now. You need to know what your bit is. Do it like a proper business, spend the money on the technology, work with people who know what they're doing. You don't have to spend a fortune because you can spend anywhere from, I don't know, really like a small Shopify website or something It's pretty cheap, but choose a proper partner and set yourself up with the technology you need. So as you grow, you know, you can scale that up. It's much harder to change later. Louise, what did COVID mean to the sleep store? Well, it was pretty terrifying at the time, just the kind of weeks beforehand of writing all the kind of contingency plans, but then like two minutes later, chuck that plan out and write another one. I don't want to ever have to write another COVID plan in my life, hopefully. We were not classed as an essential service under the first definition of like food and drugs, and we were like, that's not us. So we just shut up shop. Everybody took their computers home, but half of our staff you know, a customer service and warehouse. So they couldn't really work at home. So we did a lot of staff training and tried to use the time usefully. And then after a week, we were allowed to start trading because we were, um, we sold warm things. So all our merino and our wool babe sleeping bags and duvets, that all was captured under the kind of second stage of essential services. So that was a happy day. So we came down with our trailer and our car and we just took as much stuff as we could home. So we thought we can dispatch a small range from home. And we had also been working for a year on a new website. And so we thought, what the heck, it's April Fool's Day. So we launched our new website after a year of work on April Fool's Day with the cut down version um, instead of um, 2,000 products we launched with 50 because that's what we had in the garage at home. So that was pretty funny, actually. 
and then this year actually on April Fool's Day we launched another new website for a different part of the business so it's going to be an annual tradition I think now. That sounds interesting can you tell us about the other businesses? So we've actually got three parts to our business so there's the sleep store is the online retail direct to consumer and then the one we launched this year was Little Bird Brands which is our distribution business so um, we import from all around the world and we're the Australasian distributor for about, I think about 15 brands. So lots of, you know, retailers around New Zealand and Australia buy products from us, baby, baby products mostly, some kind of gift lines. But it's, it's an extension of products that we've done well with through the sleep store and we know there's a much wider market for them. So brands like Little Unicorn, which is a really high-end, beautiful muslin range, um, we sell that to most of the department stores and gift stores, pharmacies, all sorts. And we supply to flybys and airpoints and, you know, lot, and we have lots of brands, so not everybody has to kind of buy the same stuff. And then the other part of our business is Woolbabe, which is our um, merino sleeping bag and sleepwear range, which we also sell through Little Bird and the sleep store. Did COVID have a big impact on your supply chain? Well, we started last year with way too much stock. I got a bit overexcited and ordered quite a lot of stuff. So that was really handy while everyone else was running out of stuff. We had a warehouse full of stock. So that meant that initial few months we had plenty and we traded, well, we did still, you know, we did half our normal turnover in April, which was plenty when it was just me and my kids and husband packing those orders. But we, we didn't really start to suffer from shortages until late last year. And that was, um, that was due to the port and COVID and a whole range of things. Orders just kept piling up or not coming. So we've really just kind of dealt with that by just ordering up large quantities of whatever we can get our hands on so that for the sleep store, but also for our customers through Little Bird Brands, they can still get something, even if it might not be the kind of first preference of colours or whatever. We've still all the way through, we've had plenty of stock. And also we're really fortunate that over the years we've um, really focused a lot of our range on products that are own sleep store brand and wool bay brand. So we control the, you know, what we order, what we bring into the country. And we've just really upped the numbers and backed ourselves on all of that stuff, um, which is great for having it. And it also means now that it's completely plastic free. We bring in all of those products just in reusable or compostable packaging. They can really just kind of work on the, getting the supply chain for what our customers want. Louise, can you tell me how important sustainability is to you and to your customers? It's really important to us personally. So the changes we've made with our packaging, for example, over the years to being reusable or, you know, there, there being a kind of end for it that's not the tip, that's important to us as a family. So like when we swapped our merino to being in home compostable, what's first it's reusable Ziploc compostable bags, which most people just do compostable that theoretically you're gonna compost it. But we knew that a lot of people don't compost. So we went the step further of making it reusable lots of times and then compost it if you wish. Um, so we know that, we, that our customers love it and they give us constantly good feedback and we get very warm fuzzies when we see people like on zero waste pages and that with our bags, you know, they've got our little fabric bags at the veggie shop or whatever. We do love that. So, you know, it is important. I think customers generally won't pay more, but they do expect you to be moving your business in the right direction. Can you tell us a little bit about your customer review system? We just try every day to do the best we can, like the fastest dispatch of our orders and we only sell products that we believe in and we you know answer all our emails and that as well as we can so for us it's actually just keep focused on the customer and do the right thing and then you know the reviews should follow if you're not getting five star reviews every day then clearly something is wrong and so anytime we get something that's less than five stars we really you know read it do we need to go back to the customer um, we do, our system set up to take 20% reviews about the shopping experience, so, um, you know, that gives you feedback on delivery speed and, you know, just a general kind of shopping experience. And then the other 80% is set to get product reviews. And so for us, that's just a constant um, 
check of is the quality what it should be, are there any issues, if we have products that um, that we identify issues with we'll you know sell them as seconds and drop them from our range or we'll just send them back. Very occasionally we'll get like a one or two star review and it turns out the customer had something that was faulty so we'll just ring them and say you know this is not right we'll sort you out we answer all two and one and two reviews we'll answer on the website with a if you're not happy we'll give you a replacement or your money back so we're pretty proactive about dealing with any that are not great but fortunately there are actually quite few and far between so what charities does the sleep store align with um, we've been a big supporter of Oxfam for a lot of years, which has involved a lot of long walks for me. <laughs> Their values are really aligned with ours and they work in the Pacific. So it's, you know, it's a step away from where we are, but if you just need to visit somewhere like Vanuatu to see how great the need is. So, you know, we're really happy to support them and then we encourage our customers to donate. We'll do things like sell products where all the purchase price goes to our fundraising or we auction staff and then we just put in lots of money because we really like Oxfam but we also do a lot of work in the local community with um, Give a Kid a Blanket we've supported for I think this is the sixth winter um, which is a total grassroots you know they come with their van they pick up everything that our customers drop in or that we add in we like, uh, you know, working with those kind of charities where you, someone sees the need and we can help because we can source things at good prices. And like this winter also, um, you know, we've got excess stock of, of um, some winter products. So we put it on at, you know, well below cost price on our website. And so customers can donate those products at a really cheap price. And also, you know, we're contributing some, the customer's considering mm. donating some, and we've already donated 150 of those. So they're $160 sleep suits that people are donating for $30. So everybody gets something. So the sleep store's been really successful and won some awards. Can you tell us about those? Um, we've won the Oh Baby um, Awards Every year they've run it for the best online retailer and also the last few years we've beat all the bricks and mortar retailers for just best baby products retailer. So for us that's actually more meaningful because it means people choose to shop with us over going to their local baby store. So we think that was pretty cool. And we also have won awards um, over the last few years for our bedding. We've won best baby bedding in New Zealand so beating all specialist bedding brands and and other you know brands that have really focused on that so that's for our duvets and sheets and woolly underlays and things and then this year we won um, finally for wool babe which is our own brand we won the best baby sleeping bag um, in New Zealand which is a very hard fought category and so we took that out and then wool babe also got awarded or get voted by parents as their favorite baby product of every category that they would recommend above everything so that was very cool. So Louise, the sleep store started as a kitchen table project. It grew, you got a warehouse, you thought you might sublet it because you didn't know how big it would be. And now it's full. What's the next step for the sleep store? Well, hopefully a much bigger warehouse <laughs> because we are really bursting at the seams and we've never used um, third party logistics to dispatch our orders because we like to just for it to be just right. We're also um, shortly to launch our new Woolbabe website, which is, you know, the fifth one out of the big replatforming project that's now been over two years. So that'll be all fully integrated with all our inventory and product system. And that's actually our first step to kind of like global domination because <laughs> we've always shipped to Australia, but this is our first website that we've really um, set up to take orders initially just from a small number of countries overseas. But um, so we've been having to wrestle with things like different currencies and, you know, how do you get search engine optimization for in, you know, countries other than here and, you know, the marketing for offshore and so on. We've and then it's just really, you know, every day in, in retail is a challenge. It never gets any easier. There's always new competition popping up and there's new products to wrestle with. And so, yeah, we just hope that parents keep choosing us, really. Yeah.